U.S. Attorney General Holder said he will continue to fight for passage of the DREAM Act and wants to work with members of both parties to pass lasting immigration reform. I am Idamis Toledo, Infomas. Jennifer Caballero's parents, Elizabeth and Tarcicio, are in too much pain right now to speak to us on camera. But the family's pastor, Samuel Robles, told us this Mexican family has more questions than answers about what happened to their youngest daughter. This piece of memorabilia is on loan from the Tampa Bay Rays. The bat belongs to Tampa native Matt Joyce. He used it in a game and broke it. Mmm, to breathe in the aromas of coffee is called cupping, and this café con leche is exactly what I need right now to give me that jolt to keep me going. From an early age, Spanish painters Goya and Velázquez, as well as German visual artist Paul Klee, inspired Juan to express his ideas on canvas. At LULAC's 83rd Annual National Convention in Orlando, the wife of Vice President Joe Biden, Dr. Jill Biden, spoke about the importance of higher education within members of the Hispanic community. We know that when we improve education for the Latino community, we improve education for everyone. She praised how new Pell Grants will allow more than 150,000 Latino students get a college education, and she talked about the advantages that community colleges offer Latino students before transferring to a four-year university. It's good to be here and not, uh, not to be in Washington, D.C. right now. Attorney General Eric Holder also attended the conference. He started off by joking about the looming vote in the U.S. House of Representatives that could hold him in contempt of Congress for withholding documents involving the Fast and Furious weapons crackdown. Holder said he relies on LULAC to stop immigration against minorities and Latinos. He praised the striking of major provisions of the Arizona anti-immigration law by the Supreme Court, but said more has to be done to put an end to racial profiling. Civil rights era has come, come under renewed threat. U.S. Attorney General Holder said he will continue to fight for passage of the DREAM Act and wants to work with members of both parties to pass lasting immigration reform. I am Idamis Toledo. Infomas. This tight-knit Spanish community came together Tuesday night to support Jennifer Caballero's family, better known as Jenny. Members of this small and humble church in Riverview remembered the 11-year-old middle school student fondly. She was very friendly. She was a special. She was a really good friend to me. Um, like I just saw her on Sunday. She was wearing a red pretty dress. Um, we were telling her she she hid it like she was hiding behind her mom. Um, I like like she she the way she acted was so like like so cool, adorable. At the memorial service, members of the church sang songs of praise and comforted each other. They say they miss her presence, but they know she's now resting comfortably in a better place. Who doesn't like coffee in the morning? Or how about a cup of joe as a perk up in the afternoon? If you're a coffee lover, this new exhibit at the Tampa History Center is for you. It takes a lot to get coffee into your cup. From the farms, be they in Ethiopia or Brazil or Vietnam, or even as close as Cuba to us, uh, to have it processed. Coffee, the world in your cup, explains every step of the process before you can take that first sip of java. The coffee bean has to be washed, then dried, processed, put in the bag, and then shipped to coffee roasters. And you might just learn a thing or two about your pick-me-up. People think about, you know, dark coffees, espressos, and, and, and Cuban coffee, and things like that, being very strong, but also being very caffeinated. But that isn't necessarily the case. The longer you roast it, the caffeine will begin to, to, to leave the bean, and so they aren't as caffeinated, but the taste is much stronger. Small changes in temperature and time greatly affect the taste. In Tampa Bay, Cuban coffee is the order of the day. Mmm, to breathe in the aromas of coffee is called cupping, and this café con leche is exactly what I need right now to give me that jolt to keep me going. It's a world of coffee goodness and even some stories that might surprise you going on now. With your local entertainment segment, Amidamis Toledo, Infomas. Enormous pride in his Spanish heritage, Caribbean beauty and passion define the work of experimental abstract painter Juan Vasquez Martin. So it's only fitting that his works are on display to honor Hispanic Heritage Month. In his latest creation, on display at Hillsborough Community College, the color red signifies a bordello. Aquí está 
todos estos elementos. He says a lot of his inspiration comes from what's arguably nature's best creation, a woman's curves. Una curva que te insinúa. Vasquez Martín uses acrylic paint and hardware store items like small nails in his work. He adds gray to neutralize the painting. Todo lo que yo haga aquí. This particular piece of artwork is intentionally asymmetrical. The artist uses optical illusions to distance himself from nature. From an early age, Spanish painters Goya and Velázquez, as well as German visual artist Paul Klee, inspired Juan to express his ideas on canvas. Con un violín, un cello. In this one, he says a violin, a cello, and a flute lead subtly into a woman's thigh. With your entertainment news, Amida Mistoledo, Infomas.